Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be talking about session state on Service Bus. In my last video I talked about message sessions and how we can use that to control uh, our in-order message delivery when we're using competing consumers. Session state is kind of an extension to that functionality which makes it easy for us to store information we need in order to understand where we are through processing those sessions. So I'm going to dive over to Visual Studio uh, and show you some code and then we can see it in action. Okay, so here we are in Visual Studio, uh, and what we're looking at right here is the message handler as we are receiving kind of messages coming in. And what we'll see is that I'm uh, I'm writing this stuff out to the console. Uh, in fact, I'm going to run a quick example of the application. We're sending a bunch of messages, and then we'll see here that we're, what we're writing out to the console here uh, is our, which process we are. This is our first one, which session we received a message from, and then the session message number. Uh, and so, and then the body of the message as well. And so if we go back to Visual Studio and I can quit there. We go back to Visual Studio and we can see that I'm building this, uh, this string up here. What I'm using is this session state. And so what I'm doing in order to get that is when I receive a message uh, on the args that I get, these process session message event args, I'm calling this method get session state async. And so what that enables us to do is ask Service Bus for a little bit of binary data that might be stored along, our, uh, along with our session. Um, when I get that back, if it's null, it means nobody's tried to save any set, uh, state with a session, uh, and I can create a new session state object. This is just a custom class that I've got down here with a couple of different properties on it, the messages on session and the last message ID. So if I got nothing from Service Bus, I make a new one. But if I did get something back from Service Bus, it's binary data. And so I can call two object from JSON on the binary data, pass in the, uh, the generic type that I'm trying to deserialize from. Uh, and that will give me back this session state object. Um, then what I'm doing is if the session state last message ID, so the last message ID that, uh, value that's on there is not this current message's message ID, uh, then I can increment my message on sessions. That means every time I see a new message, I'm able to increment that number. I don't have to worry about anything before the last message because uh, I'm gonna be processing messages in order. That's what message sessions are for. And so this is just a way of me keeping track of like the number of unique messages that have been published to a session or received from a session. Um, and then I'm, you know, I write this out with uh, how many messages we've received on a session. And then I can call set session state async uh, and use binary data from object as JSON. And that takes my object, converts it back to JSON, and then gets the binary data representation of that JSON and sets that back on service bus. And so what will happen is, um, I'm doing this kind of every time I receive a message, because what will happen is as I, as I start a, a brand new process on a brand new session, we'll come in here, I'll make a new session state object, so there won't be anything on service bus. I'll uh, record the, um, the, kind of one message, uh, one for the message on sessions, then I'll set that state back to service bus and acknowledge the message. And then if, you know, I'll do that repeatedly every time I receive a message. And then if th for whatever reason this processor dies or my, as we saw in our previous video, we might time out uh, processing the session because there's no messages. Um, this processor, this processor, this running process, this executable will stop running or stop processing that session. That session might be picked up by a different processor on a different machine at a different time. Uh, and when it does that, it'll still be able to access that session. It'll be able to call that same method, uh, get session state async, get back the binary data and, and carry on processing. And so the session state size is limited to the message size for the broker that you're using. So if you're on standard, I think it's 256K. If you're on premium, it's a megabyte. Um, so it is capped at, at, at that size. It's effectively a, a message uh, kind of uh, size blob of data that you can store. So you can't use this as a full database or to have any kind of real business state in there. It's really about holding state around message processing. So we've, for whatever room we've deferred messages, we could put them in there. Um, if we've got messages that we want to come back to, or if we've got, um, if we're like processing a stream of messages and we want to record a little bit of information about how many messages we expect to get, uh, something like that. Whatever it is you're using in your use case, you can use it to con you know store it. Use it to store data that helps you control your message processing, not necessarily actual business data. Um, but it's very convenient in the fact that it's kind of it transitions from uh, session processor to session processor with you, uh, and then you can you can write to it before you acknowledge the message to make sure that it definitely gets saved before you consider your message to have been processed. Um, 
And so I'll quickly just show that that kind of transitional nature. So if I start a processor here and hit up, uh, we'll see we're doing typed and zero here. You can see the messages that are getting processed. I'll do it up again. We'll start another one, I'll process session one. And so on this one here, we're at, uh, this is for customer zero, we're on message uh, 195. And this is across the whole session. You see this, this uh, here it says message number three, that's because that's a new sender that's doing that. But you know, in the session state, I've got this 195 tracked across all of the different receivers, all the different runs of this application. If I end this here, uh, when that get picks up, we started again on 196, right? So it's it's just it kind of seamlessly transitioned the message processing over to a new a new processing uh, ex uh, executable, and and that's got access to that session state, so able to carry on processing from exactly where it was. So hopefully you found that a useful intro just into session state and what we can kind of use it for, uh, how, how it can make our session processes a bit more powerful and a bit more intelligent. Uh, if you like the video, uh, please drop me a like, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you want to see more content, you can turn on post notifications as well. So you usually will notify you when I post new videos. And then in the meantime, before the next video, uh, feel free to hit me up on one of those social links. Until next time, I'll see you. Bye-bye.